All right, so we are here and I will call the meeting to order. Um, and we have six appeals for uh, set for tonight. And I was thinking of taking them in reverse order from what they're listed to uh, get things uh, going officially. So Geraldine Den Dennison, is she, she She's oh, the there she is. Ms. Dennison, hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, Ms. Dennison, can you hear me? I can hear you. And we can't hear you yet. He's not going to speak to us. Yeah. Okay, try saying, saying something again. Can you hear me? A little louder. Can you hear me? A little more. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry? Move the speaker closer. Can we move the speaker like onto the table? Okay. You can get a chair. That would help to put it on. Okay, Ms. Dennison, we'll, uh, we'll get started. Uh, I'm Jack McCullough. I'm the chair of the Board of uh, Abatement. And uh, we're going to start with you. And I'm going to start by having you raise your right hand. Uh, do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great, thank you. Now, <clears throat> we have a couple of remote introductions, I guess. Yes, we have a couple of uh, remote introductions. Uh, so, Sal, would you introduce yourself? Sal Alfano, uh, District 2 Council Member. Thank you. And who's the S? Uh, Sarah Carter. Okay, great, Sarah. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, so Ms. Dennison, we have your filing and uh, we have your statement about why you are requesting an abatement. So would you uh, go ahead and tell us what uh, the gr your grounds are for requesting an abatement of your taxes? Well, I guess it's my income level. That I mean, it's my ability to what I can afford it based on my income. Um, I think that normally I, I qualify for a property tax with, uh, with the state. Um, so, as you know, there, well, my home was reappraised, and it was, it was increased by a, a huge amount. And but the state, when they determine my what property tax credit I would get did not take that into consideration. They took my old property back and determined what my property tax credit would be. And so my property tax you know, went from, it almost doubled. Um, it went from $495 a quarter to $904 a quarter. And my income, I mean, I had to spend to pay the first two quarters, I would spend all my savings to pay for that. Um, and I know I guess the law doesn't allow for people when there's a reappraisal to consider a person's income level, but I'm just asking if you would consider my income level in, in determining my property value. Okay, thank you. Now, based on your uh, exhibit that you filed, and I'll uh, rule that all the exhibits you filed are it received in evidence. You were reporting for 2022 a household income of $44,569. Um, do you know what your 2023 uh, income was? I don't get, if I did get a, a pay raise in July, um, but I don't know if that's the same as what I'm getting now. 
And so I'm, I can guess it might be around 50,000. But I, I haven't gotten my, you know, W-2 or any like tax documents yet. Okay. Now, you noted in your statement that your uh, your home was also damaged in the flood. And could you tell us what the damage was? Well, I had three to four feet of water in my basement. So um, my boiler and I, I had a lot of belongings down the basement, to be honest. My uh, boiler and my hot water heater, uh, they were able to be repaired, fortunately. Um, my washer and dryer, I had to replace. And I had to replace things like, um, you know, the humidifier, uh, space heaters, um, and then you know, things like that, um, small appliances that um, I had. was not prepared that there would be a flood like So, um, and I also have their family early next month. But yeah, and then you know, just um, I did do some mitigation, but to help prevent um, hopefully if this doesn't happen again and again and then soon, but I got a, um, I did do some repair mitigation repairs in my part of the sewer line so that so we won't come into my basement if there was a backup. Yeah. Um, so I have that some mitigation repairs. Um, I may need a sump pump. I don't. I don't. If that's something I can deal with right now. Um, and I was told I, when I looked at better home insurance, I was told I didn't have to replace my boiler, but I don't know yet. I mean, yes, I did. And none of the water flooded your uh, the first floor or upper floors of, your, of the building? No, unfortunately. Good. Any other members have any questions for the uh, uh, taxpayer? I, 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 I really couldn't hear. What, can you repeat what the damage was? Um, or maybe. Like my, boiler, so my boiler and my hot water heater. My washer and dryer, and I and my I, a freezer. I lost my freezer. I lost my washing machine and dryer, but my boiler and my hot water heater were able to be repaired. So fortunately, I did not have to replace those. Um, I was told by an insurance company that I need to replace my boiler before they would insure me, but I don't know why. I can't see what to deal with that right now. I do have home insurance, um, but you know, I'm, I'm dealing with some of that. I mean, and um, some of the repairs and thinking about the future. Did you catch that, Bob? No, maybe. Yeah. Um, and do you know the total uh, cost of the uh, damage to your home that, uh, that you uh, paid out of pocket? Well, I don't know. Um, I did get some FEMA money. I got, well, I don't know, 4000 something. So I don't know for sure um, how much I, more I gave, um, maybe a few thousand, I know. Because okay. I have, I did do some plumbing work and other, and I replaced a lot of things. Okay, I'm, go I'm going to repeat what I think you said, and I'll ask you to tell me if you think I've gotten it right, because there are people here who are having difficulty hearing what you've said. So what I think you said was that uh, there was damage to both your uh, boiler and your water heater, but they were able to be replaced. Your washer, or you paired, sorry, your washer, your dryer, and your freezer were damaged and had to, and were not able to be replaced, repaired. And there is a variety of other items of personal property, small appliances and stuff like that, that were also lost and not able to be repaired. Is that about accurate? That is, yes. And you think you got about $4,000 from FEMA, um, you had to do, to do some plumbing work and that 
on top of what you got from FEMA, you're probably out a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Is Kim. A total of her loss? <laughs> no. Uh, do you have a sense of what your total loss was? Yeah, I did almost. I didn't. I haven't. I didn't. I did not calculate that. I don't know. Maybe it's. I don't know. I did not do a, that calculation. Okay. Donna, you had a question. Could she calculate and send it to us later, or do we have to have all the information now? Well, we can hold it, it open. Do you have the ability to uh, add up all your losses and send them to us? Okay, but I can't. You know, I didn't have not replaced. It's just I can be using my own. I think look through some of the bills I got. You know, I, I guess I can. I mean, but I don't have to tell you receipts. Some of the stuff were just just thrown away. You know, I did not replace them. They were anyway. So the small appliances. But I can. I can. I would. I could go back and find um, the receipts and. If, if if you had a couple of weeks to do that, could you do that? Yeah, so do I have to have receipts for it? They can help find all the receipts and... Even if you don't have receipts, if you have a statement that you would testify is the accurate statement of the amount of your out-of-pocket losses, uh, we would accept that. Okay. Uh, Tim. Quick question for clarification. Are we covering, we haven't talked about personal property and any other, so it's not fair to have her calculate right. personal property, is it? We're really, we're really interested in property to your structure, your damage to your structure, not your personal property. Okay. So I don't know that to the structure, I, I'm not aware, I never had that assessed or you know, determined. So I wouldn't be able to. Okay. It's all the, you know, things like washer dryer. No, it's personal property. It's not my structure. Right. Okay. Uh, Bob, Mark, Kim. Bob, to, when were the repairs made? Not not to washer and dryer, but say the heating system. When when were the repairs to the heating system made? It was pretty quick. Um, within a, well, maybe about a month. I okay. And then I had a wonderful repair person came and fixed my boiler and my hot water gear. Um, so within a month. Okay. I mean, I'm not part of the board, but oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can say anything. Sorry? Like, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We won't we won't take anything from you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't didn't recognize yeah, yeah. who you were. Kim. I didn't hear if there was uh, this year's income. Her estimate was fifty thousand for two thousand twenty-three. Okay, and is there rental property here? Is this? Uh, is there any oh. rental property? Is just your home? It's my home. Okay. Okay, so she's not asking for a payment due to income, I guess. Right. Well, she's based on inability to pay as. She is. In, the, in the statutory uh, criterion of inability to pay. Tim. Oh. Seems like it, we have had one other meeting, but a similar <laughs> issue um, last time. When it looks like the question is because the, the prebate that she got was based on last year, and then the new assessments came out. This is the same thing as the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so it would seem like a similar same resolution would be fair. Yeah. Oh, uh, Charlotte, sorry. Well, Charlotte, you had your hand up. I was up. only saying that's what I thought she was asking okay. for. Is because of her income, she's not able to pay the tax yeah. bill. Yeah. Because it went up. But I just, when I noted that her complaint, complaint also had to do with damage, I wanted to rate flood damage, I wanted to raise that. Uh, Donna, did you have something? Well, she's given us two tax bills. Um, and one that's for this year actually has the new assessment on it, the one for 23, 24, and there's, she's allowed the, the $3,072 state payment. And then 
So it's about the same payment. And last time, her appraisal for 2022-23 was the 175. So I'm confused about her saying they didn't do her allotment on the 317. Yeah, this is the same question we had last week, isn't it? It's the same thing as Susan Abdel, where the, um, the assessment came out, or the, the tax bill came out after the assessment. They, they crossed in the mail, so the, the state payment isn't applied to the new assessment. So, so the tax bill is higher. Yeah, and it, it's, it'll adjust itself next year. But for this year, it's a catch. And it's almost the same amount as, as the Abdel case, too. And do, do you know how the uh, income sensitivity is computed? Does it ha is it based on income and the assessment of the real estate? It is, and um, like John just said, it will be corrected next year when the current assessment catches up to her homestead uh, declaration. So that it, it, the amount that she pays at the end will be relatively close, other than increase in taxes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, only, the only question I has, if you look at the homestead education tax rate for the current year, okay, which they have is a dollar twelve, and you look at it for uh, the previous year, it's a dollar sixty-seven. I think they equalize it based the, on the value. Based on the value, I, they, that's why our tax rate didn't go down in Montpelier between those two years. Hmm. So they're making a calculation. Of, I've been away from this for 15 years, but uh, the, the, calcula the equalization comes into effect when you take the value from last year at 175000 That gets equalized down because we were, say, at 70%. And I think when they look at this year's, they... That's why the tax rate says 112. So it's something we should really look into before we start adjusting all the state payments. So is the suggestion that we get some more information, not make a decision on this tonight, get some more information, and then use that to? I, I, I would do that, or, or else I think we're going to have, we should be adjusting everybody's tax bill who had a state uh, payment. Well, uh, only if other people have an ability to pay issue, because well, there's still the underlying, it's not, right. the argument we're, isn't that, that there's a difference, but that the difference yeah. creates an inability to pay. So we didn't hear anything about other extraordinary expenses, we didn't hear anything something that stops. She's still here. That now. Yeah. yeah. What's this? We can ask that now. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Dennison, um, I know you've been hearing a bit of uh, what's been said here. Did you have any extraordinary expenses or anything else other than your income or the, your taxes that has made it uh, impossible to you to, for you to pay uh, this year's taxes? Well, not that it's other than just the usual living expenses, utilities and just you know, paying my mortgage and you know, the same old. My income level was just not, was not, I was not prepared to have that kind of an increase of a property tax. Um, and like I said, I spent all my savings to pay the first two quarters, and if you won't give me a break, I will have to, you know, I would like to have some savings so that if I have an emergency, I'd like to be able to be, have, have savings and to be able to cover some of those things. But, um, you know, I just get by, and I, I don't have a high income. Um, I'm moderately, my income is moderate, so I appreciate you. Whatever you would consider. And are you willing to tell us what your uh, mortgage payment is per, per month? It's about, it's about, um, it's almost $800. It's like 790 some dollars a month. Okay. I've been living in my house since 1998, and I've been through two other appraisals, and it's not, it's, 
and they've all been manageable. I've been able to handle the increase. They've never had anything like this happen before. I'm not, I've been in this community for a long time. Gotcha. Does any member of the board have any other questions before we wrap this up? This, this one's harder because with Susan Abdo, she very clearly said this was impacting her ability to to handle basic life. To eat. To eat. That's yeah. The thing yeah. Eat. yeah. <laughs> and so that's that's kind of a different situation than simply that the taxes are very high. I don't know where to go with that. So is there a motion of any kind? Make a motion to postpone judgment until we get the additional information that we ask for. I mean, it doesn't make any difference. I don't want to go to the effort to try to find all that information because it was personal property. So it does, in, in my whole thing is that it they have a property tax increase of this level, it's excessive. And it really does impact me, my ability to save money, to save and have a cushion for emergencies. I have a car, I may have car repairs, I have just basic living expenses that I need to have, like everybody else would like to be able to have a little bit of savings. But I don't want to go to the effort to try to figure out what I lost in that little experience of trying to move past it. So I don't really want to wait. Okay. It doesn't really impact what, you know, it's personal property. You said that that doesn't count. It has to be the structure, right. the building structure. Um, Donna. I have a question. I thought second. we were making decisions no, on these after we did them all. The flood ones. The flood, just the flood ones. The flood ones, ones okay. yeah. I, I did not do that. Distinction. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, her extra expense is related to the flood. Right, but we're not. This isn't. This isn't a, a situation where there's damage to the structure due to the flood the way uh, the other flood-related abatement could. I, I understand that it doesn't qualify as a flood abatement, and yet when you talk about her other expenses. She's told us she's had these due to the flood. That's uh -huh. her hardship. And yep. I don't know how you exclude them. That's part of her. It's like having medical bills. She's had these extra bills due to the flood. Mm -hmm. The difference in the um, the municipal obligation for the two years is $767. If there's going to be any um, sort of abatement, maybe it should be the $767. Or a portion of that because or a portion of for the for the the, the two months of flooding or, or something along those lines um, because <clears throat> excuse me the, the 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 big difference in the two bills is what the state allows uh, for state payment um, the municipal rate only went up seven hundred bucks the state was seven dollars for the state payment so where the real difference is is what what the state is going to give her back in, as a credit. So if there's going to be an abatement on this, maybe it should be a part of the $767 difference. Um, if we did that two quarters and split that in half, that's 383, 384. And it will correct itself next year. Yeah. Okay, so the chair would then, sorry. Thank, no, it's okay. So the chair would entertain any kind of motion that someone wants to make for a resolution of this. Uh, re a request. I'm not convinced of um, inability to pay. I don't know if we would do a motion to. You could, you could make that motion to uh, not grant the uh, request. Okay, I will move to not grant this request. Is there a second? second. Bob, second. Is this limited to ability to pay for the whole? Of right. This is the entire request. Okay. So, your the motion is no relief. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any further discussion, or are we ready to vote? Okay, the motion is, is not to grant the relief requested. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The, mo the motion carries. Uh, Ms. Dennis, I'm afraid we were not 
able to grant your request. Thank you for participating, Bill. I have to say this. Sorry? Before we move on, it is impossible to hear clearly people uh, remotely. I Please think finish. it was just her, because when Sal spoke, he was booming. Sal was loud and clear, yeah. Fine, right? yeah. Sal was right. There's some echo going on. There's some up with her. Yeah. Yep. For what she was saying. Everybody's home situation, equipment is very different. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, Scott, you're up. Do you have a checklist of questions? I don't have any. Yes, please do. For some reason I don't have it with me. Here, you know what I can give you? I have some documents to pass out. I know she has some members who are not present. Yeah. So I believe there is a thing. I take one of the tests down. I have a couple of extra copies. I don't know if you'll have a chance to read them, but these are from members not here. Great, thanks. And and I'll tell the uh, tell you and also Mr. Boardman the way we are doing these uh, uh, these abatement requests based on the on the flood damage is that we're taking the testimony at. Uh, at the individual hearings. Uh, we're not making decisions at, at the hearings uh, tonight. We're reserving decisions on all of them until the end of the process. So at the end of the process, we'll have a meeting that we will discuss all of them so that we're sure that we're applying consistent standards and, uh, and treating everybody fairly. So, I appreciate that. Thank you. So we'll get your, we'll get all your testimony tonight, but we're not gonna. You're not going out of here with a, with a decision tonight. I understand. And you want to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great. Thank you. Now we have all your your packet of materials, which. Uh, which I will admit into evidence, um, uh, including what you filed and what you brought in tonight. And we have a, a standard list of questions we're going over with all of these, which the clerk is, uh, is recording the information because we're gonna need to refer to all that stuff at the end. Um, Donna. No, he answers the questions. He starts with your questions. In, uh, the, page of the second page. Oh. Her. The, um, yeah, the, uh, Perfect. those are the questions. Oh. <laughs> and I assume they were, All right. um, I thought it would be helpful. And again, since I know you have, you have limited time, and so I thought I'd print them out, and, and here they are. That's great. That's, that's oh. extraordinary. Well, this is great. So <laughs> yeah. uh, now I don't want to go. <laughs> so, so we. <laughs> So is there anything that you need to tell us that you haven't given us in writing? Um, <laughs> yes, because um, I got a couple of surprises this week. Uh, I, I do want you to know, um, you know, people, I, I, own, I own the building um, at 124, 128 Main Street. Um, and my wife and I own that through an LLC. Um, and we have a tenant, which is Yankee Wine and Spirits, and my son and I own that business through an LLC, a separate one. Um, I wanted to know, um, you know, we probably wouldn't have survived this at all, except for the, the graciousness and the generosity of this community. Um, Montpelier Alive, um, the work they did, um, not just, you know, I mean, supporting the whole effort. The trash collection was uh, relieved all of us who were um, building owners of an unbelievable burden. Um, the BGAP program from the state was very helpful. I got, I got a grant, this satchel property got a grant of 42000 We got a grant of 24000 from the, um, uh, from Montpelier Life, um, or Montpelier Strong. Um, and that was wonderful. Um, so I want you to know we did get that money. Um, but um, 
also, I don't know if it's come on your radar or not. I sat down with my accountant today, and um, and I, I realized I should have known this, but I realized for the first time those those grants are all taxable income, oh. and so and so we <laughs> you can um, you know cut it by a third or so, um, um, which is crazy. Anyway, it is what it is. Um, but I, I wanted to make sure you had that disclosure and you understand my commercial tenant is my uh, my other my other business. Um, I'm a long time resident, a resident of Montpelier since 1980. We own a home um, here in town and uh, been a business person in Montpelier for over 40 years. Um, I'm, I'm not retired yet as an attorney, but I'm, I'm sort of semi-retired. I've stepped back um, a bit. I'm of counsel to my old firm. Um, but the surprise I wanted to tell you about, because the second after these questions, I put a spreadsheet together, and, and it, it details the, um, the cost we've experienced as we've gone forward. Nearly 150000 to repair the uh, building uh, and the systems to do things like relocate the electric above the flood level and things of that nature. Uh, we relocated hot water above the flood level. We couldn't do that with our furnace. We had to repair it. So it's nearly 150 to date. But this is a strange one. If you look at the um, that first page of that spreadsheet, and, and oh, before I do it, behind it, this is just all documentation. And, and it's not every invoice. It's just the major ones. Mm -hmm. um, to give you a sense of it, because you know that you'll see things for ten dollars to buy brushes or rags or something. It's it's an unbelievable project to try to put a building back together again. But the one I wanted to point out on the on the first page, um, there's a entry, the third entry down for twenty two thousand five hundred. We had um, engaged Service Master to um, work with us and help us clean up the building, and they. Um, gave us an estimate, um, which is in the A1 uh, exhibit, they gave us an estimate of $89,000 to do that. Um, and, uh, it, and, some, and actually, I know some of you did stop by the building in those early days after the flood, so you've seen the mess that had to be cleaned up. And some of you own buildings yourselves, and, and you, you saw your own messes. Um, so, I thought that was a lot of money, but um, I didn't really think I had any choices. And um, so I agreed to that. It was a time and um, materials contract. Um, I paid the 22000 and um, they did a good job. And uh, subsequently, I didn't get another invoice from them. So I, I, I didn't hear from them. I didn't hear from them. I, I actually didn't figure the twenty two five was going to cover it all, but I, I just didn't hear from them. Uh, I didn't go out of my way to try to contact him either, but I didn't hear from him. Um, I think the reason I didn't hear from him was because of the destruction to our post office. That they had, uh, it turns out they sent a bill sometime in um, November, and um, I never got it, and they never used my email or anything else or called me or did anything else. And then finally, um, uh, like last week, they sent me um, a letter um, and uh, and attached an invoice, which is A2, and, and the invoice is for $165,000 for the cleaning of this building. Um, the, uh, uh, I don't know where this is going to go yet, because um, I hadn't planned on that. I had planned on somewhere around the eighty nine or $90,000. Um, I can tell you that if anyone, if I, I mean, my work as an attorney is, is sort of time and materials too, you know, and when I send someone a bill, it shows what I did, when I did it, how much time I spent, et cetera. This is all I got from them. I didn't get one piece of detail about the work they've done. It doesn't reflect my 22,500 down payment either. So I don't know where this is gonna go, but I know right now I have it hanging over my head and I have a Fortune 500 company that's probably gonna sue me. Um, if we can't work it out. Uh, so I did want you to know that while I've spent about 150000 to date, um, it's, it's not over. Uh, the, un the other things that I um, wanted you to know is there is some um, 
you'll see here, and you'll see from the from the responses to the questions, um, we did the things everyone had to do: clean the building, repair the electric system, repair the furnace, new hot water, relocated the electric. We had to take new floors. The, the floors went down to the original boards. A new floors, new flooring, um, the, the sheetrock uh, to about five feet. The insulation was done. We you know, blew in uh, foam insulation, new sheetrock. We even had to replace our drop ceiling because with all the moisture, it started to have mold in the ceiling. So we had to have a, put a brand new ceiling in. Um, we also, we sustained um, some damage to the foundation. Um, the the water pressure in the back of our in the back of our building, the sort of the corner where um, uh, the Hugo's back entrance and the Vermont Community Foundation and our back mm -hmm. entrance, there's a, a drain there. I am concerned. I've talked to DPW about. It. I'm concerned there may be a problem with that drain, but I think water has undermined. Um, the foundation a little bit. Um, it blew a hole through our concrete, um, so that we, when we had this last uh, rain in, on December 18th, it was coming through there like a fire hose. No place else was it leaking, but it was just coming through that. Um, and I know um, um, the building next door to us, the former Hugo's. So I know they were getting water coming in as well, um, not from us, but. From, probably from a similar source. So um, we have to uh, explore that, and we're going to have to repair that part of the foundation. I don't know if we're going to have to dig down outside to do it. Um, I, it doesn't seem to me we can just plug it up with cement and hope for the best. Um, so we're going to have to do that. The other thing is our building has a, um, a brick veneer. And uh, I had, um, oh, I'm blanking on the name of uh, uh, the engine, civil structural engineers there on uh, very well. Yeah, dual. Yeah, um, and they came down and took a look at it. I don't have a structural problem with the building, but the brick veneer on the bank side, um, part of it is pulling away from from the wooden structure. And um, so in, in the summer, I'm going to have to um, get a masonry um, company to come in. There's a way to tie the brick back in. Um, you, some of you who've been around, I know a lot of you've been around this town a while, might remember on Elm Street when the brick started falling off at the building down there, by, um, which I think is on Common Market now. Yeah. So I don't want that to happen. So um, we're, we, there is a way to tie that brick back in, you take some out, tie it in, pin it back to the building. Um, it's not a structural problem, but it is a problem that you can't just let go. So. There are still some things to be done um, with this building. Um, we lost, um, our, I couldn't provide electric to my tenants for um, two or three weeks and hot water for a little bit longer. Uh, I gave them a rebate and I, put, I detailed that in, in this as well. Um, so I didn't charge them for the times that I felt they lost the use of their building. Um, with the. Uh, the liquor store, which we've been unable to open, um, uh, we have lost income uh, to the to the statue properties of twenty four thousand to date. We are going to start charging uh, uh, rent again March one. We're hoping to be open. We're we're close, um, but still, it's amazing how many small details there are. <laughs> the, again, there's a whole separate set of. Um, a whole separate spreadsheet for what it's cost us to put the store back together, but that's not for you to worry about today. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, uh, I do, like I said, I've spent 150,000 close to that already. Um, that doesn't that doesn't account for any of my time. Um, it doesn't it doesn't account for the stress or the trauma and. You know, I think that, um, you know, it's not part of this abatement hearing, but everyone who's gone through this, this is a traumatic event. It's traumatic to like, people in the city council. And it's traumatic to see our city in this situation. It's not just traumatic for me or my building. It's traumatic for this whole city. And um, we're, um, you know, we thought long and hard about whether we were going to try to make a comeback or not. And we um, decided to do it. Um, and I hope we'll be able as a city to move forward and to 
find some ways to um, ameliorate and mitigate the, uh, the river uh, and the potential in the future. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, my wife and I, we're committed to this city and uh, my son and I are committed to it. And um, so if there's, a, again, if this request is consistent with the other requests that you get and that you deem worthy of uh, supporting, then I uh, thank you for it. And uh, if it's not consistent, I thank you for your time. Great. Thanks for coming in. Does anyone have any questions? Kim. Can you purchase flood insurance for the next month? I hope so. Do you have any idea what the cost is? I don't. I don't. I have, you know, I, I've been thinking about it a lot. I was thinking about it a lot on December 18th. Yeah, really, really, with that coming in, we had a, um, we had a, a some over, over time, it almost burned out. Uh, a friend, you know, I put I put a call out. It was late at night. I put a call out on Facebook. A friend went to a granite shed and got a commercial sump pump and brought it down to our place. And um, so we never filled up with water that day. Um, I, I know that the building next door to me did have quite a bit of water in it. But I think I think we we have to get flooded trips. I couldn't I couldn't do this again. The cost you mentioned in here somewhere, the, the concern about repetition. And it's got to be real and it's got to be expensive. And, um, flood insurance? Yeah, well, flood insurance is one way to do it, but. It's pretty good. It's very expensive. I imagine it would be horribly expensive. But you can Google it. The average house is like thirteen thousand dollars a oh, year. Yeah, yeah. flood insurance. Yeah, you can buy a lot of flood insurance stuff. Okay, well, I mean, it's not. Okay, okay, that's good. No, that's great well, to hear. Is it between eight? You're and scaring me, Don. <laughs> well, I mean, I googled it for a neighbor, and I was just stunned. I just got some new bills for some of our blocks. That portion of work covered. Yeah. Uh, they didn't drop me, which I'm very grateful. <laughs> Well, it, it, but you do have to take some mitigation. So, in all your repairs, did you feel like you were able to take some mitigation steps? I did, um, but it's not a hundred percent. You know, we were able to relocate all the electric service. So, you know, for example, we had like m many commercials, our electric service main entrance was down in the in the basement. Now everything is up on the first floor above the flood level. Um, it cost a lot to do that, but, um, you know, and I, I wasn't even, you know, I didn't do it because I, of the uh, regulation, which I now understand requires it, but I just wasn't going to put it down there again. Um, I would have, I, I tried to look at alternatives to the heating system. We have four commercial tenants, uh, so, sorry, four residential tenants on the second and third floor, and we explored um, heat pumps um, and exchangers up there, uh, but the cost for that was over $50,000, and I just, on, on top of all this, couldn't do it at this time. Might do it in the future. Uh, there are some rebates uh, available for that kind of work. Um, and we had... Um, Cellulose insulation in the walls. It turns out we uh, we had to cut the walls out and you know pull, pull all that that stuff out, and then the dry stuff on top fell down through it. Yeah. So we added all that. So we got Elliot Curtin to come in um, warm, um, and uh, we used um, closed cell urethane foam, which um, is waterproof. So if it happens again. You still have to cut out the drywall and let it dry out, but I don't think you will have to replace that. Yeah. yeah so. Um, um, well, all that's good. So those types of things um, we did. Um, we have uh, we had wood shelving for wine. We have now metal shelving. Our metal shelving for the liquor. We took that out and um, brought it to my son's house. He had a spare horse barn, um, and uh, we ended up. I, I, I don't know, I, I, I thought it was crazy, but we did. We salvaged it all. A lot of it was rust, rusted, everything. We um, got it, pressure washed it, painted it all, and it's back in place, so we were able to save that. So with, so with the wine shelving, which was um, wood, we bought um, 
we bought uh, metal. Now that's not part of the satchel property thing. That's part of the liquor store, but that's also, yeah. it, it was answering your question. Yeah. So, um, but there's a lot of things that you can't protect against. And even with the um, flood insurance, I understand there's some limited protections you get for your basement and, and anything that's below ground. So. I'm not sure. I'm He's right. Yeah. I have so, another question about, um, I didn't see anything about your lost income in this. I just yes. looked at it here. Maybe. Oh, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't put a spreadsheet. I could follow it up, but I, put, I did it in the answers to the questions, so and I, I spelled it out. You know, specifically the time that the um, tenants were out. I think it was, um, it was, question that six. was question okay, six. Six, I believe. Property lost income. Yeah, so I put down the, um, the the rent we get from the apartment monthly and from the... When so with, it? it's, it's on page three of the answers to the questions. So the... The, the, the question is number six. The one, it's on page three. It was, it's the first part of the exhibit, page three of that. Um, so instead of the 3600 for that month, I um, gave them a credit for $2,613 and... Um, Charged them 987 for the time they had full use of the property. So I lost 2600 there. And then we've lost um, August through January. We have not been able to, we've, we've not been able to, well, we do, wouldn't even be able to offer the building to the uh, liquor store until pretty recently. And uh, now they're refitting the liquor store. So we lost 24,000 and we'll probably, we'll start collecting rent next month. Well, great. This is, uh, it's very helpful to have this information provided in this form. It'll make a, our job easier. Uh, Bob. Yeah. Scott, what, what percent of the building was unusable and for how long a period of time? Um, you know, I, I guess it's how you count it, but I would say 50 percent of the building um, was unusable. But that, that's if you're talking four floors, you know. Um, someone might minimize the basement, you know, but we used the basement that was, that was integral. That's where all the liquor was stored. Uh, thank God the liquor was owned by the state. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do they own it until you sell it? Is that it? They, they own it. They own it. And, uh, yeah. and, uh, and, you, and, and this was, you know, not, this is ironic, I guess, because um, no one, well, not no one. We, we had, you know, we knew there could be a flood, but no one really expected what happened that day. If there's anyone sitting here who did, then I'm mad at you for not telling me. But, uh, <laughs> but the state delivered about seventy thousand dollars worth of liquor that morning to our basement. Wow. It wasn't, it wasn't a forecast so, until three o'clock in the afternoon. I know. I know. It was terrible. Uh, but we had we had all our storage down there. We had our furnace down there. We had our electric down there. We had a bunch of our systems. Our oil tanks were down there. So you, you said about fifty percent of the building was totally unusable. Yes, the basement. Till... The basement and the first floor were totally unusable, except I mean we we were in there doing repairs. Um, I mean the, we didn't finish the floor until just about. Um, I could look at where Alex came in. Okay, but one place here, you say the total loss rent between August 1 and January 31 is the 26000 The Yeah. Now, what, and then with the other portion where you're down here, you talk about you're not going to open until March 1st. I don't see direct. But that doesn't matter because we're just looking at the first two quarters now anyway. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing with this process. Yeah. All right, so, but that includes um, the first four. That, that would be the first floor. The, the, the liquor store rented, their lease was for the first floor in the basement. And each, each of the floors are the same number of square feet? Yes, it's a okay. rectangular Eight, building. Great. Yeah. Um, okay. The, the um, second and third floor in the apartments, other than the temporary loss of use, because mainly from the loss of electric. Yep. Um, but you know, we did lose hot water. Um, and you know it, it's easier to live with hot wa without hot water for a little while than without electricity. And we were lucky to get the heat back because I explored everything for heat. I explored city heat, which again we couldn't have got up and running in time. Um, couldn't have done it. 
um, explored the heat pumps, and finally I realized I had no choice. The only thing that would get them heat before the um, weather turned really cold was repairing the furnace. So that's what we did. The furnace is no longer the source of hot water. That's, that's now the hybrid system that's above the flood level, but uh, it is, um, it is our, our, that's our heat source. And we just barely got that in, and I think it was mid-October. So it was getting pretty chilly. And you were time. able to repair it, not replace it. We were able to repair it. Because I understand if you'd been required to replace it, would have been required to go upstairs. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know where where we could have put it. Well, thanks. I uh, I'm sure I'm not the only person looking forward to having you back in business. Dry January is almost over, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. And everything seems to take longer than yep than you think. Yep. All right. Thanks for coming in. You're very welcome. Thanks for your attention. I appreciate it. And I appreciate all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Break down detail. I'll distill them. Well, uh, Some sort of well, I have access to any of that material that's handed out and there's extra copies or yep. electronic yeah. copies. Okay. We've got electric, yeah. extra copies. So Two extra copies. Okay, Mr. Boardman, thanks for coming in. Yeah. Well, I didn't realize we had to do that. Well, you don't have to do well, it. He, 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 he did. He went over and I, oh, I see that. Above what uh, yeah, that was perfect. That was required. Yeah. Good lawyers always over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's a cost to not. <laughs> So, would you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, now we are looking at four, four is it? Uh, separate properties of yours. And uh, as, as I have with the other uh, properties, I will... Uh, Admit the uh, the filings that you uh, submitted into evidence. Uh, presume that you would uh, testify that uh, these are fair and complete uh, statements. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is going to I'm going to go over the list of questions that we've uh, prepared. Um, to get the basic information that, that we've decided we need to address these. So speaking first of 8 Langdon Street, um, was there a 50% or greater loss in the value to the primary structure of, of the property? No. Was there a loss of use of the primary structure for 60 days or more? Yes. And... Um, how many stories is this building? Three. And what uh, what floors were uh, do you, did you lose the use of? Well, because of the electrical and the septic, we lost use of the whole building for the duration of the repairs. Okay. Um, Back to the tenants. Gotcha. Was there loss of access by by the property owner to utilities for the primary structure? For 60 days or more? No. no. Was there condemnation of the property under federal, state, or municipal law? No. no. Is the damage to land only, to the out, outbuilding only, or both only? Do you have both. any? You know, do you have any out, outbuildings on the property or just the main just building? Just the land main building. Uh-huh. And has there been income loss? Yes. And do you know what the income loss? Yeah, we can was. send that to you. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, do you know the building's uh, total square footage? I think it's twenty-three thousand. And uh, that that we have actually we have your property card yeah, too. So that's on there. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, I didn't realize we had to do that, but I can send you all the information for And and the. Uh, Estimated square footage of the damaged area. Once the uh, utilities were restored, 
Was there damage to the upper floors or just to the ground floor? Just to the ground floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we've got the uh, figures for the square footage of each of the floors, so we can compute that. Okay, does anyone have any other questions regarding 8 Langdon Street? Just one, so on that one, so you had started a project before the flood, right? To That's correct. And so basically you moved all the tenants out and you were in the process of renovating the upper levels. Well, we didn't move the tenants out yet. We were in the process too, so we okay. gave them all notice, but then the flood hit. Okay, so they were so, okay. Yeah, was exactly. Sure if you were yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, is the, uh, is the place back? habitable and able to use now? The first floor is uh, ready, but um, as Tim said, we're working on the second, third floor we're doing our renovation uh -huh. now, so yep. the tenants are able to use it now. Great. The tenants are what? They're able to use the building now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Sorry, when was the first floor repaired and ready to use it? Um, I'd say mid-November. Mid we were pretty close. So five months, basically. Mm -hmm. Which building number are we talking about? Eight Langdon. Nice. And what efforts, I mean, what took so long? So it didn't, it feel free to, <laughs> 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 not, not, not in, a, in, a, in a mean yeah. way, but give no, us yeah. a description well, of I mean, what you were doing during that time. It's square footage based. It's, uh, you know, as uh, Scott said, we tried to rectify for future flood. We moved utilities. There's a lot of utilities in a building that size and everything, the basement that was existing, we removed and mitigated everything and cleaned, repaired all the floors, replaced everything. So, I mean, we did our due diligence, which takes time. Did you wind up having to replace the furnace or whatever the heating system is? Yes. All electrical, all heating, everything's been moved in. That's all up above flood level now. Yeah. Depending on how bad the next yeah. flood is. Yeah. yeah, within, yeah, to the best of our abilities, yes. Yep. One thing just that's interesting with this building compared to a lot um, is it has a sewer pump system. So like most of the properties we talk about is gravity flow and how the city lines, this one. So there's an extra mechanical system. Well, that that's why we had to remove the tenants, right? Right. Because you actually couldn't use the building. There's no ability for septic or water. Huh. Right. Which now it is gravity. You did. Good for yeah. you. Congratulations. Yeah, it's a little tough, but we did it. Okay. Um, so thank you. So it was, yeah. And how long was it? You said it already, but how long was the delay on the fixing all that so that the tenants? Oh, five minutes. No, for the no, for the um, the upper floors. Oh, they we they had to move out. I mean, you can't use, you can't survive it. Right. How long was the sewer system out? Of, uh, well, once they moved really. out, it wasn't a priority. We discovered all the flood debris. Okay. So I wouldn't know. Maybe th three months till we get it functioning properly. Um, because the work you're doing upstairs is not just to get it back to where you were, but to create Improve. housing units there. That's correct, yeah. mm -hmm. and I forget, how many housing units are you putting One. in there? Great. Yeah. Always happy to hear about new housing units. We need people. Yep. We've got to spend money. Mm -hmm. Last night's topic. Donna. That's a nice topic. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm missing something. I don't see any actual cost numbers. He said he was going to send. Okay. Yeah. I did, that's what yeah. I was missing. Well, yeah. it didn't state. It just it was they're all yes or no, and I've never done yeah, no, that. Uh, I totally understand. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted. I just hadn't heard that. So. Yeah. If, if Scott's uh, sheet is public information, I will. I could use that as a template. <laughs> yeah. It's a square spreadsheet. It, it actually it is. is. Right. So yeah, I that's could true. use that as a template, then I could. I think everybody really should. I mean, he probably put <laughs> adequate energy in the I'll compliment him on his legal work, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Make life easy. All right. Are we ready to move to the next property, uh, 7 Baird Street? All right. 7 Baird Street, this is a building I'm familiar with. This is the apartment building. That's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't as bad. Um, we had no flood insurance on that, but we did have to do a bunch of work in the basement, laundry, um, remove all the storage units and all the flood um, debris and mitigation of water from that. So that was, like I said, there's no insurance or anything on that, so we ate all that service out of pocket. 
And in this building, the only uh, floor that was affected was the basement? That's correct, yeah. Okay. So was there a 50%? I think, I think I'll know the answer to all these questions, so I'm going to go through them all just so we have them on the record Absolutely. in easy form. Not a 50% or greater loss of value to the property. No. Was there use to the primary structure of the property for loss of use of the primary structure for 60 days or more? No. Was there loss of access to the property owner to utilities for 60 days or more? No. Condemnation, no. And condemnation is no for all of these. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Um, the, is there uh, damage to land only, to an outbuilding only, or to both only? Was there damage to the land? Uh, no. Okay. And, and I don't remember if you have any outbuildings or just an outbuilding. Okay. Just a um, has, was there any income loss? No. Okay. And <clears throat> we have. Is, is this another one where all, all the stories are the same uh, square footage? That's correct, yep. And the damage was only the square footage on the ground floor? That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions for this one? I have a picture where this is. Is this? My neighbor. In the Liberty Street neighborhood? Close. Okay. So uh, St. Paul. Oh, gotcha. you know, you know okay. that little. Yeah. It, it's this cool brick building. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful apartments. Yeah. My yeah. friends lived there a long time ago. <laughs> and and it's a sideways sideways on on St. Paul Street. So yeah. yeah. Pop. Yeah. Just you, you said there was damage to the first floor too. First, you can turn basement. No, no, the basement. Just the basement. Yeah, the first level. First, okay, that's the basement, the basement is yeah. the first level, okay. Yeah, when I said ground floor, I meant right. the basement level, yeah. Okay, because first floor, got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to check on the card here, thank you. Is that, looking at the picture here, is that the first row of windows that we see? That's that? That's good. That's good. Yeah, the two sides are garages, right? That's correct. Right. Yeah, and the laundry. Okay, we can move on to 8 State Street. And could you remind us which building this is? That would be Botanica's, uh, World Cow, and Anna's. Okay. Can you say those again? Botanica, World Cow, and Anna. And, uh, and that is how many stories? The three, building? Yeah, three, three stories. Okay. And uh, is there a basement? That's correct, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Was there a 50% or greater loss in value to the primary structure? No. Was there loss of use by the primary owner of the primary structure for 60 days or more? By the primary owner? No. Okay. Um, what about the tenants, tenants on the first yes. floor? Yep. Uh huh. And um, were they paying rent during the time, or was there a time no, when they were not paying? No rent during the floor. Okay. Once they were, once we got our occupancy, we charged rent, and uh -huh. that was up to them. Okay. That's awesome. And uh, not condemned. Um, any damage, no outbuilding. No. And no damage to the land. Um, uh, what was the income loss? I could send you that, but it was the three months of tenancy for the building. Plus, we had no flood, so we repaired, moved, altered, and did all that at a in house. So, three months of, uh, of income loss for the first floor. That's correct. And the uh, Upper floors maintain remained yep. usable and occupied the entire time. Yeah, there was a little inconvenience with the power, but we got that sorted out right off. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are there uh, any offices in that building, or is it all apartments? It's all apartments. Uh -huh. And and we have the information about the total square footage That's and the square footage of the damaged area is just the first floor. Mm -hmm. 
And I'll send you the expenses and the cost. Great. So, so first floor and basement? And basement. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> we're young we're, we're just basement. Basement. <laughs> Any other questions? Donna. Uh, was not this, this building also affected by the floods in December? Um, no, there, was just, there, was just, there was just some water into the basement, yeah. So that affected electric coal? I had no No, heat. no, no. No, they had no heat because of Irving. <laughs> they had no heat because of Irving. Uh, Irving, oil. Yeah, so when Irving set all those tanks, uh, they didn't, when they set the new tanks, they never put them on auto, though. So. so everybody ran out of fuel. Yeah. <laughs> but it, to their to their benefit, it is new setup and it is a new account number because the tanks are new numbers. So, and they did a lot. Irving was very busy. Yeah, yeah. I just knew that they were closed. Yeah, the weekend, yeah. The weekend, I wasn't sure. Yeah. No, because they were back open like an hour later. But they, yeah. they were long later. Yeah. Any other questions? Are we are we ready to move on to the next one? Okay. Finally, to State Street. This is the one on the corner. That's correct. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and uh, basement in this building too. That's correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. And was the damage in the basement in the first floor only? Basement first floor only. Uh huh. Was there a fifty percent or greater loss in value to the primary structure? No. Was there loss? Uh, of, of the primary structure for 60 days or more? To the tenants, yes. Uh-huh. And how many, how long was it? About three months, but uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, I saw Willis in there working in the store sometime before Christmas, but yeah. yeah. Well, and the fire hit him, so he, he's got some broad shoulders. Oh. Uh, yeah, he took, uh, he took it, I mean, but we, we got him back as fast as we could on that one, too. Uh, yeah, that was, because nobody else is open, there was somebody that Charlie was just for them. No, no, we we kicked it in gear for him. We cleaned it, yeah. got the sort of pure clean in there the next day. Uh, we actually got the power onto the whole block, so we, yeah, we pushed for him. And there was never a time when the upstairs tenants were uh, were out. Oh, great. Uh, they were only inconvenienced by uh, hot water for maybe three days or something. Like that. Um, not condemned, uh, no damage to land or outbuildings, no. um, loss of income, no. the rent on the first floor for three months, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and, uh, and we've got the square, square footage because it's rectangular the same, yep. Um, now with some of these properties, uh, my recollection is, uh, Are, are you the owner of these buildings at this point? Yes. Okay. Anyone have any other questions? Are the bases rented or is that just kind of storage for um, utilities? And stuff? Yeah, it's just empty utility space. Mm -hmm. And did you have to uh, replace the uh, furnace in this building? Or? In to stage three, no, we repaired it. Okay. Anyone have any other questions? And Sal and Sarah, I just want to make sure that you're hearing and you, yes, yeah, Sarah, you're, you're all set? Okay, good. All right, well, what we're gonna do, as I said, is we're gonna, go over all this stuff at, at the end of the process, which is uh, you know, around three weeks from now now. Can I get a Oh, sure. Thank you. I've got plenty for yeah, yeah. the other folks. You can probably email the email. I was going to say that. Or, or me. Yeah, yeah. 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 probably to Joe. sure she's done some communication, so we'll, uh, yeah. we'll do that for each individual property in question. And Super. Great. Everybody's happy. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Thanks, you all. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming.